Hello, this is the Aftermarket Sunday Report with Vegas and Jim, November the 25th, 2018, and I'm going to pass this right over to Vegas. Okay, hi everyone. We're enjoying your weekend, and I'm going to give you a list of things to watch for tomorrow and probably for um, Tuesday. So we're going to talk about BPTH. We're going to talk about any. We're going to talk about SFET, Israeli ticker, David's T, CRMD, and an OTC special OTC called an HPI. So first one we're going to talk about is uh, BPTH, which is Biopath Holdings. Um, they recently had their earnings a couple weeks ago around the 15th. And they just talked about uh, various things, you know, about uh, their inf um, the phase two clinical trials. They talked about how they have commenced stage two of uh, one of their trials in August of a drug called uh, Prexibersin. And um, what's interesting is that the company will be at the American Society of Hematology, which is known as the ASH Conference. And this is being held in San Diego, California. And that will be from December the 1st until the 4th. They will be presenting on the 1st, which is on Saturday of next week. Now, um, this particular stock, <clears throat> Jim will talk about the chart in a second, but uh, a lot of people have been trading this for quite some time in anticipation of the clinical data. Similar to like, let's say, an OGEN. You know, when OGEN had potential news uh, that they were going to be releasing um, for their presentation, we saw what happened with OGEN, and that had a nice run. So this could somehow behave in a similar way. So if you're not in the trade, you may want to take a look. You may want to have a swing position. Uh, it may actually start triggering some action tomorrow. Um, but uh, probably a lot more hype on it towards the end of the week. Um, so let Jim talk about that chart and tell us what he sees on BPTH. Well, BPTH, here's your yearly chart. And we had a yearly high of around 309, which I would probably consider right around about 293, right there off that base of that candle right there, 294, 293, with a resistance around 280, but that's long go. So we've had a pretty good little sell-off on this thing. It's bounced up from 33 cents about a month and a half ago. And just uh, Friday, we almost run right into that 50 SMA on a yearly chart. That 50 SMA was at 57, and we closed right at 54. We, and we had a, and we, we come close to hitting that 57 a while back, three days ago. So I'm kind of, I'm bullish on this, not kind of. I'm going to bring this down to a linear channel chart. You see it followed that linear bottom line right down there and then run up to the 50. So let's see if we can bring it up to the pivot point resistance, which is right around 68 cents. And I'll pull that up on a 20 day. And you can see that 68 right here. We had a high of 66 just about four days ago. So I never say rush into a stock. I say wait for the tape, wait for the volume, wait for maybe a pullback. But if you're eager, jump on in. And this is BPTH, pullback maybe right around 51 cents. Oh, I'd say maybe right around 50 if it happened. If it happened, 51. But we could go and probably break on out of this and hit that, and then we'd have to break that 56. And if we broke that 56, then we're off. BPTH, and the next one is any Vegas. Okay, so any Sphere 3D, as you guys know, they got the news that, you know, they're back in compliance here. And that's actually good. I think they're, the stock's in an upward channel and um, the trading volume's been really good. So it's actually positive to see that uh, the volume uh, keeps uh, keeps on moving. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, just, you know, concerned about uh, swing trading the stock. But um, it's actually a very nice weekly chart. So I think we can expect uh, some more... Uh, movement uh, in any and I'm going to turn it over to Jim just to talk about where he sees the supports and resistance so that you know those of you that are not in the any trade may want to take note of these particular entry points and maybe consider them for your own uh, trades 
Yeah, we've noticed any. Any was not one of our, well, we liked any for a while, then it became one of our worst loved stocks, and now we're starting to like it again. Yeah. <laughs> and we noticed that any closed uh, Friday right at the 200 SMA, which is a very powerful move, the last three days, actually. I mean, this thing can pull back down, don't take me wrong, which it does, and I'm going to indicate the pattern in this next chart. I mean, not that one, but we'll go to this other one here right here at the five day you notice we have like this little flag right here and once that happens it breaks down and the same thing happened here it had a little rise up and then it broke down and it came down the next day and kind of created a, a support level well we have another flag right here mending and I think the same thing could happen it could pull back a little bit we had lower highs from the previous high so I'm looking at maybe just a small pullback on this stock and I mean 413 is asking too much, but if we can get this thing down to about 470 to 497, somewhere in this channel right here, I think we're going to be looking at a bounce back up. And this is any. I like the stock. I need to change this here thing right here. Put this other trend line where I like it right there at 470. So we've got two little pullbacks here, 507 or 535. Those are the two I'm looking at, and that'll be any. I'm still bullish on it. I'm just waiting for a pullback. Okay. Well, we'll keep an eye on that one. So the next one I'm going to talk about is, you know, you guys know I like Israeli tickers. And um, one of the ones that's kind of caught my attention is uh, one called Safety, S-F-E-T. And it's called uh, Safety Group Limited. And um, this is interesting because it's an Israeli ticker. It was an IPO earlier this year. Um, it's got a really small float, uh, believe it or not, around 300 and something thousand. Looks like 310,000 in the float, give or take a little bit. But what I like about it as well is that I did see that there was 13G filing in October from a mutual fund company called Ayalim, and uh, they have a 9.5% stake. And another uh, fund management company called Infinity Provident Funds also has a stake in the company of 0.52. So that does intrigue me. Um, the other thing too is that safety, uh, you know, they're very into data security, you know, for your um, platforms. And uh, they're in, you know, they have a lot of good partnerships too. And I think Jim can show you there, but they have partnerships with uh, Amazon and they have a partnership even with Microsoft, McAfee. So, you know, they're an interesting company to watch. Uh, you know, for me, the reason I like is really, I will say, is I really like their uh, technology. I mean, they're a leader in technology and into, especially in security. <clears throat> so um, this stock here, um, just as a starter, just because I kind of liked what I was kind of seeing, very, uh, very uncrowded. Um, but, you know, I just think you should just keep a watch on. Um, there could be no volume for quite some time. Um, but they did have, what also the stock is they did have uh, very good earnings. And uh, in their earnings report, uh, they did mention, which was that uh, they had a backlog of customer orders who have not yet been charged. And that amount came to about 821000 compared to a backlog from last year of 203000 um, You know, so the revenue quarter to, to about uh, 248,000 versus 180,000 last year. They have an increase in sales in the Middle East, uh, so that's good. And also the increase is also due to expansion of the company support and professional service team, which uh, also uh, increased a little bit of their payroll expenses. But uh, the company looks to me that they're in you know, in expansion mode as well. So this is a good, you know, one, to, I think, to watch. And, you know, people will talk out there, oh, you know, pumping a stock. There's nothing to pump. I mean, no one's telling anyone to buy anything. You know, it's just sharing information appeals to me. 
Um, again, this is not, you know, it's just for you to do your own due diligence, just sharing what I've found. Um, also, the company also has um, an increase of 94% in sales uh, in comparison to last year. So this company is on track to probably continue with an increase in their revenue. So the fact that it's a tiny float and the fact that the, rep, the earnings were very good and a recent IPO um, is interesting. So again, your own choice to, to decide if you're gonna take a trade or take a position in the stock and uh, you know do your own due diligence like you should be doing anyway. So Jim, what do you think about that chart? Yeah, uh, pretty nice little, I mean, uh, pretty nice chart. It, the IPO came out. And that was right around 405 net first day and ran up to five bucks. So then the next little while, man, she started running up and she had a $13 high and she's pulled back. So I'm finding a little support right now here at around $4, 413, 419 maybe, 420. Got a little pivot point right in this channel here at 450. And we got a resistance at 489. So I'm just going to, I'm not in the stock either, but I'm going to be putting it on my watch list for next week. I want, it's a low float, real low float stock. So, that, you know, if this gets any kind of attention at any time or any news comes out, this thing could run up and bounce pretty fast. Or it could pull back. But I think we found, I think we found support here right around four, little, little around four bucks. And it did have a low on this candle right here, right around 366. Anywhere below that would probably be a buy. But it depends on the tape and on the level two and the action. This is S F E X. Next one's David's okay. T. That was S F E T, Jim. Oh, I mean, excuse me, S F E T. <laughs> okay, so next one is David T. You guys know it's a Canadian company, and uh, David's T should be to watch again. It looks like the uh, MACD lines are up, and it's showing me movement uh some people i know are already swing trading stock and um one thing i do like is that they got a new cfo and uh this gentleman his name is frank and uh he just joined uh david's t he's got very good experience and uh he hopefully his mission just so you guys know um he has been hired specifically to actually um you know turn the company around his focus will be to do that and to actually create term shareholder value uh he's got a great track record of helping companies achieve this and uh he previously was the cfo of a company called lop and he was uh involved in mergers and acquisitions and this is what i liked he also was a senior manager uh, with Price Waterhouse, but also internal auditor for Coca Cola. And there's always that rumor and chatter that people like to see that oh, that you know, would eventually want to do some sort of partnership with David's T. But that's just all, you know, chatter. But you never know. I mean, if they can turn this company around, I mean, way below PO prices. Um, so this gentleman. Uh, Frank Satella, uh, he will be joining the team December the 10th, so he has not joined yet. Uh, so it'll be quite interesting to see down the road um, how David's T will start to form and shape uh, while he's in position at the company as the CF. So good job to Herschel. It's great that he brought in a new CFO and uh, hopefully... Um, we'll see some improvements with David's T. And Jim, what do you think about that chart? Well, I pulled up the website and they had a real nice special going on, Black Friday, probably still going on, 30% off, up with a purchase of 50 bucks, you get free shipping. And they they are top of the line tea company as, as I went through the website and you saw the different kind of teas. So here's David T on the yearly chart. We've had a major pullback on this stock. It, the, you notice the pot sector has kind of pulled back a little bit on a lot of them, but I think we're ready for another rebound. We've had the past three days, it has rebounded up to the resistance level of right around, look to me like 
oh, 212. So I'm going to pull this up on a 20 day chart. One hour, and here we are. We've had the last three days have been a pretty good rebound bounce. We run up to about the uh, resistance level of 208. We had a high three days ago of around 212. So let's see if this pulls back any at all to 204 at the most, or maybe right here at this 203 level, and run up to the 216 and just keep on moving up. But David's T, we got it on watch. I think it's in a reverse. And we'll just have to see. Usually after three, we see three days here, and it kind of bounced on down and went back up. But David's T is definitely on my watch list for this coming week. And you know what? I just want to add point two um, because it is a Canadian company, and they did announce um, earlier this year, around August, that they were going to sell their tea bags at Loblaws, which is a huge uh, grocery store chain in Canada. So... I wonder if that'll help contribute and increase their sales as well. And they have, um, you know, 75 stores across North America. So they've done really well. And um, one to watch for sure. Yeah, I'd like to see it get up to 224. And that's, that, I'm looking at a yearly chart, and that's kind of been solid support. So we're definitely oversold. And if we get it back to 224, I think we can bounce it up a little bit more. And that's David's T. Next Okay, next is CRMG. This is Core Medics. And, you know, I got to say, I really like everything so far. Um, they did have their earnings report. Uh, you know, they are a biopharmaceutical company. And what they do is they focus on commercializing and developing therapeutic products for prevention of um, inflammatory disease. So um, they did have that as well. And uh, when I was looking at the earnings report, um, looks like they, you know, they had some losses, though, uh, compared to the year before. And uh, this is driven primarily by the increased costs related to their clinical study called the Lock It 100. Um, so, you know, you can expect that this is, you know, when companies are in phase two clinical trials, I mean, this is going to happen. So they, their expense is very expensive to do these things. Um, so cash on hand, though, was, um, I believe it was 6.4 million. Um, as of September 30th, restricted cash of 0 0.2. And the company does believe that their cash resource um, proceeds that's received through their ATM program, uh, which was mentioned in their 10Q, will, will help fund the company's operations into the second quarter of 2019. So that's pretty good. Um, but I really have to say I love this chart. The chart's just beautiful. But I'm going to let Jim talk about the chart because that's what he loves talking about, his yep. charts. That's right. Well. CRMD, we we brought this up last time when we learned it a, a couple months ago that we were this thing ran up to 240, and it did that well in, in a matter of 10, 15 days, and then we had this major pullback to what I would call a support level right around 102. Then it got oversold and went to 85 for a couple of days, and now we've bounced back up in the past four days. So what we're what we're feeling right now is we're kind of going to consolidate come Monday I bet or pull back a little bit then once that happens we could probably take it back up to another leg and I'd like to see 145 again that's a solid little resistance right there especially if it pulls back you know we could pull this thing back to 123 it might get you a good little bounce play on this this is CRMD and I'm going to look at the 20 day real fast see how this beautiful last week that's just a beautiful pullback from that 84 85 position Run up to 145 and we closed. So, yeah, man, it's thinking go ahead and pick up momentum. I seen it pulled back to 133 and then right after hours went back to 145. So, this is kind of telling me that it could be a little bit bullish, maybe even breaking out Monday on Monday. That's the way I'm looking at it in a way. Look at that. You see what I'm talking about? We hit that 145 double top on that day. Let's see what happens. Let's see if this breaks out or pulls back. Then have another bounce back up. That's CRMD. 
Yeah, and I do like it had a nice pocket pivot as well. Yeah. So it it's been a great, uh, nice, uh, nice channel that it's in. So I'm going to definitely be watching that one uh, tomorrow. Okay. Okay. And uh, next one is an OTC one because I know I have OTC traders that love hearing about OTC ideas. Um, and this one is for a stock called NHPI. Now, this particular stock had a beautiful run. If you go to Jim, we'll talk about that in a second. But this company here, NHPI, um, they had a new 50. You okay there, Jim? Yeah. They had a new 52 week high. And um, this, you know, this company, we were actually looking at that one on Tuesday night. Um, so this stock is one to watch. I think, you know, with the fact that it's had a new 52 week high, um, you know, when we looked at it, it was back down to, uh, zero six and now it's at zero zero eight. So one to watch for continuation. This could probably go to about a penny and I'm going to let Jim talk about the chart because I definitely looks like to me that it, this stock if their volume can continue on monday or Chris, from the traders um it could have an expansion breakout so that's i'm going to be watching this one too all right in hpi mm -hmm. um you can't say nothing about how beautiful this breakout's been and it's just it started back on a 927 926 and it's it's been a good month so we've run up i mean this is just beautiful almost three two months and we hit a high of 83 cents 0 0.0083 I think a pullback is probably warranted to about 7.2 that's a solid support maybe a lower 0 0.0669 and yeah I mean it can pull back a little bit more because this is this is beautiful this chart's just plump beautiful you see how I'm drawing these trend lines in trying to look for a pullback area so we're going to look at a 20 day right now and see what it brings to me I haven't charted this up. I wanted to wait and show everybody how I do things. So we had a 0 .077 right there. NHPI, I'm definitely going to keep on watch. This is a beautiful chart, and I'd like to see the continuation happen. We've got a little trend that comes up here. So let's see if this thing can pull back to about 7.2. 7.2, no lower than that. And that's NHPI. Okay. And then I have a little OTC little bonus um on a stock called SEDO. I only want to mention it because they did have a name change the other day and it had zero volume and then suddenly out of nowhere uh $120,000 worth of uh buys came in on this stock and the float looks like to be about 369,000 shares, which is shocking for OTC. So it's pretty tiny. Uh, don't really see much chatter on this on social media or on iHub, uh, which is a bit odd. But I will say, because of the fact that that volume came in, um, that money flow, it's definitely one to watch. You know, just can't ignore that. So no position, but definitely, I think, one to watch. Um, the company is uh, involved in um, a very interesting website and i don't know if jim can you show that site there on uh, are you showing that site no i took, on I took it off okay we issues with it. that's that's okay so this uh company here the uh, website's uh cdolab.com and uh this company here what's interesting about it is um they actually have uh, hydroponics growing that you can do from home so it almost looks like like a little fridge and you put your seeds in there. You plant a seed basically and it's monitored through an app and then it just lets you know when it's ready. So it's kind of like an automatic lab. So it's self-sufficient. You just plant a seed and then the, the little lab does its own little thing. And then I guess it notifies you when the, when the plant is ready. So very interesting uh, uh, platform looks like a little fridge and um, it also has uh, built-in artificial intelligence 
uh, that determines uh, what's required. It's got, you know, perfect humidity. It's got carbon filters just to make sure that there's no bugs, no smell, no leaks. Um, it's got an LED system and also makes sure to release the proper uh, carbon uh, monoxide during the photosynthesis. So very, very interesting. And you can actually watch your plant grow with a built-in camera without opening the door of that little fridge. So very interesting. Anyhow, so one to watch because of what I noticed on the uh, OTC market. And uh, I think you should take note and keep this on your radar. Yeah, I wonder if they ever would like to get into the cannabis industry. That would really probably make this stock pop. Well, the, the, the product is designed for the, um, looks like, you know, they're into vegetables, you know, that. but yeah, I think they should look at the cannabis sector. I mean, I think look, pop look like all they the did. things they're into. Yeah. So let's look at the chart. This is sea dew. And, you know, there's not much I can tell you about this chart because I just got one candle right here. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. well, just on this one candle, we had, you know, a low 43, and then you had it right around a 49, 54. So, what I got to do is I'm going to be watching this stock next week, come out Monday, and I'm going to start drawing up supports and resistances on it. I want to keep an eye on it, because I kind of like this idea, too. I, um, I'm, I like to eat vegetables and stuff. I like to grow my own, my own herbs. Now, I mean, you could be, I mean, you could probably grow your own, uh, herbs for this thing or anything so this is sea dew let's keep it on watch and i'm going to start drawing trend lines and everything for it next week okay and uh before we wrap up our market show i do want to mention that if you're going to be in new york city i mean the holiday season's coming up but what's what's really happening on thursday november 29 between 2 30 p.m and six o'clock so you can even go when the market's closed if you're in the new york uh, city area or if you know someone that's out there and is on uh, visiting because a lot of people are visiting and uh relatives and friends at this time of the year too uh they're going to have the official uh new york stock exchange 95th annual christmas tree lighting ceremony and the closing bell um, this will be hosted by A.J. Calloway, who you guys know is uh, on Entertainment Extra. They will also have appearances by the cast from Billions. So many of you watch that show. Um, they're going to have the Coca-Cola Polar Bear there, the Hershey's Candy, the Grinch will be there, the Harlem Gold Trot, uh, Globetrotters are going to be there. Um, all kinds of uh, other celebrities there. There will be performances by the Radio City Rockettes. They'll have um, other uh, singers that are going to be there. So I think you should check it out if you're going to be in the New York district. Um, definitely uh, something to experience. I think it's great that they do this. This has been something they've been doing a tradition uh, since 1923. And this is now the 95th annual event. So if you're going to be in New York or you are in New York, Definitely, I hope the weather's going to be okay, but you should definitely check this uh, event out. I think you'll really like it. So stay tuned for that because I will be definitely showing you guys some pictures on uh, what it looks like um, once it's lit and pictures of this beautiful tree that they're going to light up on Thursday. So check it out if you're in the area. All you New Yorkers, come on down. Uh, if I that's all for me. If I definitely lived in New York, I'd want to go just to see the Grinch. I think that well, you be... know what? I want to go see everything because okay. I want to see the the cast from Billions and you know um, yeah. all the different singers that I love. I love the holiday season. I love the lights. I love the music. I love everyone's in a good mood. It's just exciting time of the year. So I'll share pictures of that on probably on Thursday. So stay tuned. All right. And well, that's it. We're going to be starting a Santa rally here real soon, so keep that on mind. And, and we love stocks, and this is the Aftermarket Report, Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim, November 5th, 25th, 2018. And we love stocks. <laughs>